Ah, what a wonderful day to work on some machines. Wait, what? What is, what, what is this? I didn't. I didn't make this. It's locked. Huh. Wait, what's this in my inventory? Steve Co. Supply Crate Key. So, do I just do this? Is this unusual? What? No. No, 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 no. Are you kidding? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh. Oh, neat. Okay, enough joking aside. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm here showing off this little ditty right here. Um, this is my, uh, Unusual Machine. Uh, those of you who are unfamiliar with Unusuals, Unusuals are an item in Team Fortress 2, which, you know, they're cosmetics, and when you put them on, you get this neat little particle effect that appears above your head. Um, and I wanted to recreate that in Minecraft now that we have the particle command. Now I know there's a lot of people who have made machines like this. Um, and the problem is every every one of them works for single player only and it also targets by name. That's not what I want specifically. What I want is targeting by the lore. Uh, it's something that like players can't do on a normal basis you can do it with command blocks but on top of that you um it allows you to still rename it to enchant it change it you know make it all whatever you want um and it also the it doesn't work for multiplayer it's always single player um everyone uses the at p targeting and it took me a while to figure out how to do it um do it for multiplayer and that's what this is about it uses scoreboards uh it targets lore uh so here let's get started with this first to build the machine what you're going to need is a hopper comparator repeater and some command blocks. So to build it, what you want to do, first thing you want to do is set up a hopper clock. If you don't know what that is, uh, it's pretty simple where you just have the hopper feeding into each other, drop in one item, and it's about a seven tick timer, which is pretty nice. Um, then what you want to do for the first layer is set down a comparator there, comparator there, comparator there. You want to put command block, command block, command block, command block, and then a repeater and set it to three ticks. This is, uh, this is just the basic layout of how it, l it should look. Um, you can stack them on top of each other, um, and I'll go through what each command does on them. If you notice, the this command block doesn't appear on any upper layers because this one only needs to be done once. First thing you'll then want to do after that is set up a scoreboard. And here's just what my scoreboard looks like for uh, for the unusuals. Um, so you'll just type this in. This will create a dummy scoreboard, which allows you to change. Uh, it allows you to change the score manually, and it it only changes when you know you have a command to change it. These two are just meant to reset it, you know, it's just a simple fill error, you push the button, it syncs them up and it makes sure that they're on the same. Okay, so for the command block on the left, what you want to do is you want to have the scoreboard for all players, or for players, set it to, for all of them, this is the name of your scoreboard, you can name it whatever, to zero. This allows so that if I take off my unusual, the particle effect stops. If you don't have this, somebody's score will get set and it won't change. And it won't change back and it'll just keep playing the particle effect. Um, then you want to come over to this one. This one's kind of a longer one. What you want to do is you want to type in scoreboard players set 
at a unusual to one for your first effect and that counts for and this will work for everyone you'll just change the number from two, one to two to three to four to five whatever however many you have um, then what you want to do is you, you want to have this data tag it's going to search all players that have this data tag specifically so what you want to do is put in the brackets inventory and then you want to have them check the slots. Slot 103B is the head slot. Then you want to have a tag. It's going to specifically look for this tag on that piece of inventory. So what I have here is it's looking specifically for the lore of effect burning flames. And what this does is it only looks at the lore. That's all it's looking for. And as long as that line of lore appears on the item, it's going to work. And then you can see over here, these two are going to be the exact same command. What you want to do is execute. What execute does, if you're unfamiliar, is it, play, it, it sorts a command to a player's location. So if you did execute with summon, it would summon a creeper at somebody's location. Then you go over to your selector, which is at A. You want it to target all players. But you want them to target with this score specifically. So you're going to set score, whatever you named your scoreboard, a mine's unusual, uh, the minimum one, and then the score equaling one. So this sets its specifically for that. Then you do the coordinates. It's just easiest to do it. Uh, relative coordinates of zero. Then you do type in particle. The, that'll execute the particle command on the player's location. You then select the particles. Uh, I'll have a link in, below in the description for the wiki. Then you want the coordinates according to the player. So having it at about 2 puts it about head level. You might want to put it a little higher, maybe like 2.1, so it's a little bit above the head. So these next three are the coordinates. These next three are the radius. This is how far away they go. Um, you want to keep it relatively small if you're trying to keep it contained above um, a player head and by doing that it you know it keeps it all there in one spot this is the speed this is how fast the particles fly um, some of them you this is something you're gonna have to play with um, some of them go way too fast some of them go way too slow you know just kind of play around with it test it see what works and then this is how many particles it plays. Um, for the for uh, the flame particle, you know, 50 works. It gives it a nice constant flame. But then um, other ones, like I think it's hearts, you don't want quite so many. Um, it can get real overbearing. So this is another one you want to kind of want to play with. Um, so, uh, just mess around with that, and like I said, this one is the same. So then that way, it alternates ticks. So let me go ahead and put the unusual back on. And you can see it's playing the flame effect about 50 times. Uh, you know, and it, it alternates ticks. It works really, really well. Um, I also have programmed into here a heart one. Let me go over to my little chest here with the Cloud Nine. Now I tried to name them a little bit after Team Fortress Two, so and you can see it's little hearts and yeah, it, it's it's pretty nice. And then I also here let me go ahead and grab the die. I just wanted to show you that you know you can die them. You can name them. Sweetie Pie. You can enchant them. 
Oh, not too bad on there. And it still works. See, look at that. It's always on. Okay. So, th that's pretty nice. Um, now, after I built the unusual machine, I realized I could do something else with this. And I can... Uh, Use it for potion effects as well. You kind of want to set it up the same way, you know, build it, but you don't need that second one, uh, second command block across the right with a repeater, because the effect thing you can actually set a time. So what you want to do is add another one. So like, I've got another scoreboard. I've got the this one called P effect for potion effect. So like, once you have that scoreboard set up, what you want to do, again, you want to have the scoreboard set to zero along the left hand side. Um, you want to have the scoreboard set for whatever it is. So like this one sets it for the head and it looks for the tag night vision, um, which is pretty nice. But then also say you want to target something else. This one targets the feet. 100 is feet. So going up, you've got 100 at feet. 101 at legs, 102 at chest, and 103 at head. So that way you know the armor slots. And again, this this is something you know you can play around with. You can change um, the lore to be whatever you want, depending on whatever effect you have. And then this one over here, you want to do effect at A. You kind of still do the same targeting as before, where you want it to be score name of the scoreboard, minimum, and then the score, whatever you set it in that, that one. Um, then you want the potion tag. Um, specifically, you'll have to look on the wiki. I'll post a link below to that as well. Um, so 16 is night vision. Next one is time. Typically, you want to go for about four seconds as this keeps ticking. But night vision has something a little strange where you have to uh, do it a little different. Next is the amplifier. Zero is actually what would be like level one for any potion effect. So say for night vision, since it doesn't amplify as you go higher levels, just set it to zero. And then what this true is, is it means hide the particle effect from potions. So if you do, if you leave it blank, it defaults to false and you'll still see little squiggly lines along the side but if you set it to true what it'll do is it'll hide that effect so I'll come over here I actually have a couple things I've got some bouncy boots and a night vision cap so let's go put those on you'll see there you go night vision jump boost just appear let me set it to night. And you'll see I can still see pretty clear. And I can jump a lot higher. I think it's about three blocks I can jump. Yeah, three blocks. Since I've got it set to uh, two, I believe. Yeah. So you can jump a lot. I can jump a lot higher. And, uh, you know, you can do this with any of the potion effects. Say you wanted to have something cursed that, you know, it gives you a nice stat boost, but then while you wear it, you have the wither effect. You can entirely do that. It's pretty easy. Um, and then maybe give it another item that gives you regeneration to counteract the withering effect. You know, it's just an idea. Um, what's also really nice with this, um, I, I, when I first built this, I thought it would not work with stacking but oops wrong item um i can actually stack them you can see this one's both got the unusual and the potion effect i mean you can have two unusual effects on a single hat you can have seven unusual effects you can have a heap of unusual effects and potion effects so while i've got both machines running let me go ahead and take those off um let me just see that's the flicker I was talking about that if you uh, after 10 seconds night vision will just start to flicker so that's why you want if you're doing night vision you want to set it to somewhere around 15 so let's throw that on you'll see I get the night vision 
and I get the particle effect. So it works really well. It's a nice stack. Um, if you put this into your spawn chunk, it can work. And again, it works in multiplayer. Um, and also what's really nice is since the unusuals are a uh, cosmetic, it's within the Mojang EULA to use it for donations. It is a cosmetic. So this is, can be very useful if you're running a 1.8 server and want to have some sort of donator perk. So by all means, you know, try it out, play, or play around with it. If you've got any questions, just ask me in the uh, comments and uh, I'll see you soon.